Welcome back to the shop guys. When we uh, were last together we had our bow uh, set at brace and we were leaving it for half an hour. Uh, so coming back to it now, uh, this has actually been a full hour so I left it for a half hour at the end of the last video. Strung it up again today so that uh, we could get a good start on our tilling process. Uh, I'm going to step back here and hopefully Hopefully you can see this bow from tip to tip uh, and kind of get a, a feel for its initial bend. And out of the gate, I really feel that the bend is pretty good. Um, if I'm being critical with it, I would tell you that I feel like I'm bending a little too much in the outer third of the limb and, and need to carry a little more on the inner limbs here. Uh, I think a part of that has to do with the fact that when we glued it up, we didn't quite get as much reflex as, ne as initially intended. So this. This bow uh, really has a lot more reflex than it does deflex, and I've mentioned that a few times as we've gone through the build, um, where we're going to have to activate the inner portion of this limb a little early, earlier in the draw than we would had we gotten that deflex glued in a little better. So that's like anything, every, every bow you make is going to offer its own set of circumstances, and that's the set that we're dealing with on this particular bow. Um, so from shape, that's my that's my first uh, assessment here. Um, if you take and look at this bow, I'm hope I hope I'm getting a good view here uh, to kind of show how the uh, string bisects the limbs, bisects the grip more specifically. Uh, so we are not dealing really with any twist, at least nothing major or anything that we can't address as we go along. And finally, uh, the last piece of everything here is now that we've sweated it off and kind of given it its initial fingerprint, its uh, first feel for how it's bending, um, if you take your thumb and just kind of do a fist milli kind of measurement on this thing and see that uh, the string to the fade on this side my thumb will extend above that the string here. On the, on the alternate side, on the other side, I am just barely up to my thumb height. So on quick measure, we can see that this limb is a little bit stiffer. Uh, on initial, initial observation, that's a little tough to perceive, but we are here. So we've got, we've got what I would term as a positive tiller for those of you guys that like to uh, um, tiller your bow that way. Uh, we've got about a quarter inch positive tiller here, so we're going to designate this limb as our top limb. Uh, continue to work to ensure that our bow or our string does in fact bisect the grip at all times. We always want that string to bisect the grip no matter which side you're shooting off of, uh, but your stronger limb generally resides on your lower side. So the, the one with a little bit more bend, we're going to call our top limb. Uh, we'll move forward from here to do uh, some tillering and we'll do a little more explanation of how we handle it with the faceted belly that we are working with so that we get um, our very, uh, uh, just get our, uh, a very reliable result with this tiller. Uh, I really think that this process simplifies it so for you guys that are maybe starting out or, or want a, a different process that might help you get there, this is I think it. Uh, all right, so here's a view of my limb. Uh, I have marked out where I need to take my wood off. So this is where I feel like it's not bending enough uh, in relation to the total length of the limb. When I go to remove material, we're really gonna keep the removal isolated, you know, right to the crown of the belly here. And we're gonna take that material off until the all of the white disappears or primarily so here where it's kind of spilling off the edge maybe not so much but we want to keep all of our removal on that basically the crown that we have created so we have our edges in here our chamfer more or less but as we start removing this that chamfer is just going to disappear as we remove we want to keep removing kind of off the side here or side here um, that actually kind of helps us in a twist situation where you would remove off of maybe one one side a little more so than another uh, which means while we're doing this we want to make sure that we keep our uh, wood removal 
even across the the uh, you know across the the surface of the, the limb there if we remove too much off of this side you know it's going to start twisting that direction and etc so uh, we don't want to do that so we're going to go even removal here uh, so we'll probably take like five swipes kind of off of the this kind of corner here and another five off of here and maybe five right off the 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 center and I'm going to take about 15 wipes on this to clear off that white and then we just recheck re the, chill, the tiller uh, until we start affecting the bend through the uh, inner third of the limbs that we want to get. Alright, so you can see that we have removed all of the pencil marking on the, the belly of the bow there. Uh, it goes pretty quick as far as removing it. Uh, the effect that it has can run a little bit slower. So uh, we've taken 15 swipes off. Uh, I will take 15 off the other side. Uh, we'll come back, we'll string it, we'll give it a couple tugs to try and affect that, that tiller change and, and see what kind of difference we get. Okay, sometimes in the interest of time, guys, I won't... I won't unstring my bow if I need to make uh, minor wood removal. So I have taken my first 15 uh, swipes off of the belly on both sides. I'm not quite getting the effect that I want, and so I'm going to do it again. I'm just leaving the bow strung, and I'm going to go ahead and take my removal here. Uh, a note, or something to note, is as you're taking wood off, you don't want to concentrate your wipes the same length necessarily every time and maybe run some that are a little bit shorter and you're just feathering this work into the rest of the limb so uh, we don't want to create any hinges on our own it's bad enough that wood does it for us but we don't want to create any of our own so everything keeping real even uh, once I take off with the card scraper almost every time uh, I'll also come back over it with the double cut on the handy file here. And, uh, what you'll find, hopefully you can see it here on the screen, is that luster will start to soften and you can see it. Uh, you can have quite an effect on your tiller with this file. And I find that the finer the file and the harder the hardwood, the more effect they have. So uh, a handy file will do a lot of work against ePay, which is a very dense hardwood. Uh, also with uh, hickory, which is another very dense hardwood, where you might want to go with something a little more aggressive if you're chasing uh, oak or uh, maple or ash or something like that, where this will just seem to skate across it and seem to have no real effect. You'll want a little more bite, a little more bite with something with a rasp. Uh, but we have cleared off this side. I already tilt or hit the... Uh, opposing side so we're going to give this a couple more draws and see if we're getting the effect that we want okay so we're pulling to about uh, 13 inches here uh, starting to see some some pretty decent bend in those limbs uh, put a board back there to try and eliminate some of that busyness hopefully the grain isn't messing with us too much uh, my you know we if you were to read Dean Torges's book on on tillering uh, Hunting the Osage Bow, the, the tillering portion of that book, he talks a lot about using your critical eye. You know, there's no tillering gizmos or anything like that. Now, I'm not going to subscribe to the not using one because there will become a, or there will be a point at which we take a tillering gizmo to this project. So I do believe in those uh, little tools that help us get uh, good results. But just on observation, so this is what I see here. Uh, the limb on the right is bending just a little bit more than the limb on the left. Uh, it doesn't. It should come as no surprise that that is the limb that has been designated as our top limb. But that does not mean that we allow it to, to take an asymmetrical bend to our lower limb. Uh, we are going to need to take some material uh, kind of across the whole length here to work on getting that limb 
caught up to the right hand side of the bow so it, it's a little too stiff at this point so for as long as we continue to keep that bow strong and we keep working it and we keep working toward tiller uh, we find that that right limb is continuing to get just a little bit a little bit lighter a little bit lighter or that left limb just isn't getting worked as much and it's just getting stiffer and stiffer so uh, I'm gonna take now and just work that that lower limb or the limb on the left uh, specifically and we're gonna we'll work this again until we can get to where we've got a pretty symmetrical pull all right so I took uh, 15 wipes off of that left hand limb uh, basically from fade to tip and you can see that it's starting to bend a little more in concert with the limb on the right hand side and so I'm going to go ahead and, and call this pretty good and continue to uh, lengthen the, the draw for as long as those limbs are bending evenly we'll continue to uh, pull until we we hit our draw weight our desired draw weight and once we hit that then we know we need to just lose weight at that point um, as you uh, encounter any kind of flat spots or hinges you stop immediately at that point and you work to get those uh, remedied before you move forward okay so when we get this guy to 20 inches I think you can probably read there maybe we're pulling just under 45 pounds here's our bend and so we can continue to work but we're only at 20 20 inches at 45 my my whole goal here is to not overstrain these limbs during any portion of the tilling process so 44 pounds or 45 pounds right now is all I'm gonna do uh, try and tiller it I think my next uh, goal markers to, gonna, is going to be to be at 24 inches, 45 pounds, and uh, and then and then we'll uh, really dial in to getting it to about 50 pounds at 28. So took off some some weight and kind of exercising it here. I'm pulling to about 20, 23 inches and getting 50 pounds. So I'm at 50 pounds right there. So if you take a look at the tiller on that thing and unfortunately you're kind of on a skewed angle uh, from where I'm at uh, the bend really does appear to be in pretty good shape uh, at this point you know I'll run a block along the limbs or, or a tillering gizmo and and if you're not familiar with what a tillering gizmo is I'm sure there's some some uh, other YouTube videos out there that you can look up uh, and and get a an idea of how to make a tillering gizmo but Essentially what it is is a, a block that you'll run across here. It just kind of measures the, the gap between the two ends of the block and your belly. And if you have a pencil positioned in there, it'll draw marks on your flat spots. And so it's going to pick up those areas that are uh, imperceivable you know to you where you can really get a very fine tiller going so when we take a tillering gizmo to our limbs this is the sort of thing that we get uh, where it picked up a slight flat spot here and it's not uncommon to be right near a node here usually on the back side as a matter of fact so we got one spot there on the other spot we actually were starting to get a little stiff on the outer portions of the limb here and you can kind of see the pencil, the pencil line in between the that's been stitched over by white, so I can see it a little better. But those are those are some tillering areas that we're going to get straightened up here as we start approaching full draw. Okay, guys, I'm going to take a quick time out to kind of show you what's happening to the facets on the belly of this bow. Um, you'll see in the as the light's reflecting off the the belly there, those facets are all but gone. A um, little bit, maybe just right out of the fades, you can still kind of see uh, the facets, but they, they disappear very quickly as you make your way up the limb. And I'll try and put a flat edge here, kind of give you a feel for where we're at with that. So it is crowned, there's no doubt about that. Um, but as far as the appearance, and truthfully, uh, even if you're trying to work a flat belly, you're going to get a little bit of crown in what you're working. So, when I said that in the end, this is effectively a flat bellied bow, 
uh, there's the there's kind of the proof or at least an example of what you're gonna finish up with we still have uh, four inches of draw to work out of this thing so all right guys at last tiller check we are at uh, 53 pounds 26 inches so I'm taking just the last little bit off of these limbs uh, to get us down to the 27 inch mark at about 23 or 53 pounds when you get to this point you really want to be mindful of any tool marks that are being left on that limb because now as we are as we approach final I mean your real final uh, dimensions final wood removals we want to do as little uh, marking up of this belly as possible so that we don't uh, have an unprofessional look or or an area where we could uh, sustain a, a fret or any kind of crystal induced by our own tool marks and so I'm taking 15 swipes off of each side here uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and just go through the swipes here okay so taking off my 15 15 swipes there I've saved every every removal I've made so this is the amount of wood we've had to remove from this limb to get to our final tiller or to this state anyway to this point uh, now I will take and work only my uh, single single cut edge of my handy file right and just kind of clean up what we got going on here because at this point this belly of this bow should be starting to look like glass that's the idea uh, when we go to do our final sanding uh, the sanding will of course take out any leftover residual marks but we don't want to have to dig in with that sandpaper to remove marks we need to come home as with every stage of this build we want to be as close to the next goal as we can be before we get to work on that goal. So we want as smooth a surface as possible before we start sanding. So we'll get this strung up and we'll uh, see where we land on the tillery tree. Okay guys, we're gonna work it out a couple times before we take a measurement. We wanna pull it to at least as far as it's been pulling and maybe just a little beyond to make sure that we get all of the wood removal uh, changes, any changes in our tiller manifest when it's pulled just a little bit further. And so, here we are at 27 pounds, and we're still at about 54, or 27 inches rather, and we we're at uh, 55 pounds. A little more, a little more removal yet to be done here to keep ourselves in that 55 pound range right, guys just a very quick section here um, hopefully you can see in the light uh, that's the belly of the limb right there and when you work specifically with a uh, card scraper or cabinet scraper uh, you will find that as you start working your limb or every time you do as a matter of fact you get something of a, a washboard effect on your work surface and that is why that's why every time after addressing it with the with the scraper we'll come back and address with the file because the file is going to take that sort of thing out um, you get those washboards all the way down your limb and you're just asking for crystal one other habit to, uh, good habit to get into as you approach full draw uh, is to remove the real steep the steep ridges of your your bamboo backing uh, and this would be in the instance of a bamboo backing so uh, if you're using a, a hardwood backing then this would be obviously not important but I'll go through and just knock these down so I'll take a file and like this knock them down jump because I've had I've had a backing lift a splinter right on a node and it it didn't cost me the bow but it cost me 10 pounds of draw weight and an inch off of either end to get back to something respectable and so as we as we approach full draw and we're, we're really starting to get a, a good bend on this bow go ahead and take down the uh, the nodes All right, here we go Oh, 
full draw. We're at about 56 pounds. We want to pull it repeatedly to 28 inches here. You know, so we're getting a really good view of what we've got going on with this bow. Eight inches, 56 pounds, and you can expect that as we sand it, it's going to lose a few pounds. Somewhere, you know, I've heard anything from you know three to five pounds just in the sanding process. But uh, this is pretty much it. We're gonna, just gonna keep working it to full draw. Yep, 56 pounds. Good look at the bend of the bow. Pretty pleased. Right. Probably not gonna be able to see me, but I'm gonna unstring it right quick. Set it down and get a quick measure on the deflex here. So about one and five eighths, right? We started at two inches. So we're at about one and five eighths. That's the string follow. So if we start at two, we end up at one and five eighths. We're we're following by about three eighths uh, from start to finish. So uh, when we start talking about the strain on the limbs, that is really minimizing the amount of strain in production. The shape of the finished bow. Unstrung, just unstrung. All right, so let's talk about next steps here. Um, I'm going to borrow a term from uh, Dan Perry, you know, in, in the in his his uh, chapter of uh, the traditional Boyer's Bible in the fourth edition about peaking and tweaking. All right, so we've got a we've got the the main bow done here. It's it's pulling. It's uh, I think we measured it out at 56 pounds, 28 inches. We're going to lose a little bit of weight in the the sanding process and the finishing process. Uh, we'll come through and radius off all the edges here. Uh, almost give this a I mean just a really radius edge. We'll put a, a, a tip overlay on there so that we can go uh, even thinner and still be safe with our our knock on the front side or on the back of our the back of the bow um, we will radius off all of these edges and in the process of radius radiusing them uh, there there again will be a little bit of weight lost uh, so we should settle in hopefully right at the 50 pound mark um, or close to it and guys this process is a very long process and I, I recognize that and and I've put it into a relatively short video um, I'm sure that I have glossed over some pieces or parts uh, if you have any questions or, or uh, need or have interest in a little more uh, information or how to do something feel free to drop it in the comments and it's something I can address in a future so. video Again, thanks for uh, sticking in there with me, and uh, I'll see you with the next episode.